am so excited that you're here because I have an incredible conversation to share with you that I had with the amazing Selena Sue. So Selena is a publicity and marketing strategist. She helps people to get publicity. I have worked with her when my book came out. She helped me to get featured in um, Forbes and other places. And um, she's also done an incredible masterclass for us inside of our members club on how to actually get publicity. It's amazing. If you're part of the members club, then definitely check out that class with Selena. It's so, so good. This is about how anyone at any stage can get publicity. You don't need to have created loads and loads of success or have built a six-figure business to be able to get publicity. And publicity also comes in so many different forms, like from podcasts to being featured on other blogs to obviously mainstream media, big magazines, you know, TV and all that stuff. So in this episode, she shares her seven-part framework for getting media exposure and just lots of little nuggets even things I was like oh my gosh I need to think about this I need to do that because sometimes it takes for someone to prompt you or make you think about something to be like oh yeah like never thought about that so I hope this sparks lots of ideas for you and just really helps you as you think about ways you can actually get in front of way more people um because especially if you're in the early stages of building a business um and you don't have a particularly big audience of your own there are so many audiences out there you can leverage um even in this conversation I talked about my early my early stories of getting media exposure when FEA was me, myself and I, and I literally had an audience of zero when I just started out. (laughs) Um, So anyway, I'm really excited to share this with you. So enjoy. You are watching the She Means Business show with me, Carrie Green. I'm the founder of the Female Entrepreneur Association and the author of the best-selling book, She Means Business. And every single week, I'm going to be talking with you about how you can turn your ideas into a wildly successful business and actually live the life of your dreams. You can do this. And I'm so excited to show you how. So let's get started. Selena, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to chat with you all things publicity. Me too. I'm so happy to reconnect with you. It's been a while and it's always an honor to talk to your people. I know. It's been a while, hasn't it? I think I was, well, obviously we were just chatting and trying to figure out when we last connected was, but it must have been when you did the masterclass for us in the members club. Okay. So that was, I don't know, two years ago, perhaps a little, I mean, probably over a year. Yeah. That masterclass is so good all about publicity, which obviously is your thing. So I'm excited to talk to you about publicity and like how people can actually get publicity because I guess publicity is, well, to me, it feels like a little bit of a shortcut because if you're starting out in business, you don't have your own audience. There are so many other platforms you could leverage to actually get your message out there and be seen and heard by so many more people if you can actually understand and leverage how to use publicity, which is everything that you do when you teach. Yeah. So I'm yeah. excited about this. No, well, I have so much to say about that because I think a lot of times entrepreneurs feel like they need to have hit six figures or achieve some kind of big milestone in order to be ready for publicity. Um, but that's not the case. I think publicity is what makes someone um, noteworthy and generates buzz and excitement around what they do. And like you were saying, it helps them build their audience. Like when you get started, you don't have an audience or maybe you've got an email list of 200 people, which can feel like an amazing accomplishment to go from zero to 200. But imagine if you're on a podcast that gets downloaded by 10 people or 20,000 people, you know, you're able to impact so many more lives. And the other thing is, is there is a credibility piece that comes with publicity that goes even beyond reach where people start to see you differently and really see you as the expert that you are. You know what? I'm going to put my cat in a room. He stepped on the computer and turned down the audio. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to be right back. He's been naughty today. <laughs> Thanks for being such a sport. This never happens. It's kind of embarrassing, but thank you for <laughs> so, To be fair, that. I'm usually filming with my dog in the background, and every now and again, he just starts barking, and I'm like, oh, God, goodness sake. Um, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, I totally agree with you when it comes to like the power of publicity especially when you're getting started and like you said being featured on a podcast where you get exposure to so many more people I remember when I started FEA one of the first things I did was actually I set up a Google 
keep, I think a Google alert or something. So I could nice. find out when there was any like articles on female entrepreneurs. And I remember this one article that was written that was saying that the number of female entrepreneurs in the UK had come to a standstill. And I was like, um, excuse me. And so I looked up who wrote it, the journalist's name, got his email address. And he wrote for this, he wrote for the Telegraph in the UK and emailed him and he emailed me back and we ended up chatting and then literally a few days later he sent this photographer to come and take pictures and he did this massive spread in the actual telegraph newspaper as like a as like a response to his original piece and wow. it was amazing and i didn't have anything like i didn't have a big order i had nothing i'd literally just started it was just an idea but amazing. it made me realize what's possible and yeah. And what happened? Like, did people start contacting you, visiting the website, joining? Yeah, people contacted us. And it was so funny. Like, even my ex-boyfriends got in touch and was like, my dad just saw you in, a, in the newspaper. I was like, this is funny. This is this has been so reaching, funny. reaching people. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, yeah, and I think it also helped me feel momentum. Mm -hmm. It made me feel like I was actually getting somewhere and people yeah. were listening and paying attention. It wasn't just me and this like little silly idea anymore. It was something that had been featured in the media. And it, it don't know, it just it changed the way it changed the way I felt about what I was doing and it made me feel more credible, I suppose. The fact yeah. that I got featured. Um but but yeah, I just I think it is so powerful. And I think so many people just think that, oh, I don't have anything to say, I don't have anything to share why would anyone want to feature me? Why would anyone want to hear my story? And I think so often we just, us, we, we lack so much confidence in ourselves and our ideas that we don't want to put ourselves out there. And I think it's really interesting about you because you talk about how you're such an introvert. Yes. You, you're obviously such a powerful connector. So you don't have to be some like really out there, confident extrovert to get publicity. No. And, I, you know, actually people feel inspired when they see different kinds of role models and experts and leaders out there. You know, people want to be able to see a piece of themselves in someone else. So the thing that maybe you feel like is holding you back, like you're an introvert or maybe, you know, I just started my business. I'm not a six figure business owner yet. Well, you know, you may be more relatable to someone. Maybe you're just a couple steps ahead of them and they rather take advice from you. So I think it is really good to kind of celebrate, you know, what makes you unique and, and don't be afraid to hide that. Yeah. So before we get into more tips and tricks for actually how to get publicity, how, yeah. what is your backstory with like getting into publicity? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was in my mid 20s, and so this was over a decade ago, I had a quarter life crisis. And I found myself in a place where I had really low self esteem, I was clinically depressed. I had trouble getting out of bed in the mornings and things got so bad that my mom flew from Vancouver, Canada to New York just to be by my side and, um, you know, making sure I could get out of bed in the morning, you know, head to work. And I remember talking to a friend saying, you know, I, I just like, I cannot feel this way every single day. I want to find a way to, you know, feel better. And she introduced me to this female life coach. And through this um, women's life coaching group, I got exposed to incredible um, you know, entrepreneurs and thinkers and experts and authors. And I realized that, you know, when people are suffering, they're not just looking for more information, they're looking for inspiration and for a role model who embodies the message. Because if we're just looking for pure information, we can Google that. Um, but it's so powerful to have someone who maybe has healed themselves from a chronic health issue or broken free of toxic relationships or was lost and now helps others find their life purpose. And as I started reading these books and getting exposed to these people, I started to develop hope. And I just felt like, you know what, the world needs to know about these amazing individuals. And, um, and I just started being that connector. Like, even if I didn't know certain people, I would reach out to them and tell them, like, the work you're doing is amazing. I would love to connect you to someone I know in the media. Um, in other cases, I would connect other entrepreneurs together for win-win opportunities. So that's kind of like how I grew my business. Um, but I, I really believe that there are so many people, and sometimes the best people that can make the biggest impact in people's lives 
are those hidden gems that no one really knows about beyond their small circle. And once you start getting publicity, I mean, it can change the game, right? Your profile raises one opportunity, snowballs into the next opportunity. And so, um, you know, it's not about like being famous for famous sake or just like showing off. It's really about getting those opportunities and that access so you can reach and transform more people's lives. Yeah, which is amazing. And you obviously do that so well for your clients and like get them featured in like the Oprah magazine and Forbes and Inc. I mean, obviously my book came out when my book came out in 2017 we worked together then that was so fun yeah Yeah, and you helped me to get featured um in all sorts of places which was really amazing and it makes such it does make such a difference and you like you say you can literally impact millions when you go about putting yourself out there in this way what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people not mistakes maybe challenges I suppose you see people have when it comes to publicity and actually going for it and deciding to do it. Oh, I'm so excited to go through this because um, I I actually want to talk about the seven steps to getting publicity because as I talk about each of them, when people don't follow these steps, this is where all the mistakes happen. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds really good. (laughs) Yeah, so we'll just dive in. Um, So the first step to getting publicity is getting really clear on your why. You know, how does publicity play a role in your business? People will often say things like, let me wait until I have a book that comes out. But really, you know, you can benefit from publicity right away. Now, it's also important to understand your own business model because maybe you're at a place where, okay, you do have a book and you want to reach millions of people. You want, you know, millions or tens of thousands to be holding up your book. In other cases, it's like you don't need tens of thousands of people following your work. Maybe you really want to have 10 high-end clients on an ongoing basis and you're selling a $5,000 coaching package, right? So I'm saying for $5,000 is so different than something for $20, right? Mm -hmm. So based on your why when it comes to publicity and your business model, you need to then select the right opportunities for you. So that's number two, is getting clear on what makes sense for you. And um, I have a framework that I kind of walk people through to help them think about, you know, the right order to get publicity. So if you imagine like a pyramid, a triangle like this, there's five different levels. The first level is your home base, and that is your online presence. Because whether it's the media or an influencer, which I really see as like the new media today, they're going to Google you. They're going to say like, who is this person? What are they doing out in the world? And if you don't have a home base, whether it is your website with a blog or newsletter and an about page, or perhaps it's an Instagram page where you're sharing your content, but there's nothing about you, you're not going to be seen as legitimate. Um, so it's important to build that strong home base. and then. After you have that, then going up to the next level, which would be guest posting. So guest posting is a natural extension from writing for your website or writing on your social media channels. But now you're getting your ideas onto these third-party websites, whether it's a Forbes or Thrive Global. Um, but you know, a lot of these places, like they, they're well established in the marketplace. They've got these brand names, and then you being linked on their site is good SEO. Um, also oftentimes you can include a link back to an opt-in page. So these are all things, um, that are beneficial and a natural extension from like the home base. Then the third level of publicity is doing interviews, um, specifically podcast interviews or guest expert interview opportunities. This is my favorite level where I hang out because I find with a 30 minute to one hour interview, you can really go in depth about your expertise, share your personal story and even share client results. And so when people listen to an interview, it's like listening into a conversation where they really feel like they get to know you. And if you're selling things on the higher end, Um, like a couple thousand dollars or even beyond, um, this is great. The other thing to keep in mind, um, you know, there's a difference between mainstream and niche opportunities. So the more mainstream means the more people you're reaching, right? Reaching millions. But um, the more niche, the more you're reaching a very specific audience. And like I said, for some people, they don't need to reach that many people. They need to reach the right kind of person. Um, So for me, I teach entrepreneurs about publicity. And not every single person in the world needs to learn about publicity. But, you know, online entrepreneurs in particular are interested in that. So I could be on a podcast that maybe my parents have never heard of, 
but it can make a much bigger impact in my business than maybe a household name guest post. So that's why you know you want to really think about what's going to match your goals. Um, the next level up, as we move up the pyramid, we're getting more mainstream. So we're going into magazines. And obviously, it's hugely credible to be in a magazine with perhaps your favorite celebrity on the cover. And people you know, bring magazines to the beach and in bed with them. Um, and so you can get a lot of exposure. But keep in mind that people reading magazines might be more likely to buy a book. Um, enroll in a membership, but they might not be the best candidate for like a $5,000 coaching package. Um, then as you move up, you get to TV. And so this is kind of a variation of like the interviews that we talked about on level three. However, the average TV episode, or not episode, but segment with an expert is about three minutes. They can sometimes be longer, of course, if Oprah is knocking on your door and you're doing a super <laughs> soul Sunday interview. But either way, these interviews do tend to be shorter. And so you really need to have your sound bites down um, as you reach millions. But the exciting thing is as you work up the publicity pyramid, a lot of things start happening. You know, you might get approached by someone who's like, I love that guest post you wrote that went viral. Have you thought about turning this into a book? Um, I've had many students in my Impacting Millions programs who've been getting so much publicity that then they've partnered with companies like, um, let's say, a mattress company. And, you know, the sleep expert will then be a spokesperson who will represent them in the media. Um, so different kinds of brand partnerships, business partnerships, speaking opportunities, and books can extend um, from, you know, kind of moving up that publicity pyramid. And I also just want to make the point of, like, imagine, you know, Oprah's producers are told, like, you have to check this person out. And they Google you, and there isn't much of an online presence. That home base hasn't really been established. And then they Google someone else, and they see they've got, you know, they put time into creating a nice website. And when they Google them, they see articles that come up from, you know, other websites that they're familiar with. They um, see that this person has been doing interviews on podcasts. They go to the person's website, and they see that, um, you know, that they've done this partnership, you know, or been part of this guest expert opportunity, that person is seen as the real deal. And it's also about, you know, being serious, you know, if you really care about your work, you know, take that time to build your audience and build that body of work. And people are going to recognize and see that and really see you as a more ideal person to feature over others. Yeah, that makes complete sense. And I, and yeah, I totally agree. I think the internet is just such a powerful tool for every single one of us as business owners to tap into to create exposure. And you're so right, we definitely all need that home base where we can tell people who we are, what we're about, what our business is about, what our messages, what our stories are, um, so that when people do do that search, they find us and <laughs> we actually have something interesting to say, or they can find something interesting about us. <laughs> Um, totally. So obviously, as part, so what what step was that in then in your seven foot platform? Yeah. So step one is getting clear on your why, why yeah. you want publicity, what makes sense for you and your business model, and then step two is okay, what are the right opportunities? Yep. And there's different kinds of publicity, and sometimes people will pursue the wrong kinds of publicity opportunities. Like if you're just getting started in your business, TV, I mean, might not be the best place to find your ideal clients, I and mean, then you wonder why it isn't working. Whereas if you got onto a podcast with a coach that does complimentary work, you could be more likely to find your ideal clients. I totally agree. Because like um, for me, I, when I was invited once to be on the BBC when they were doing something around entrepreneur week or whatever it was. And um, while it was fun and exhilarating being on like live TV, slightly stressful, my God. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was fun experience. Like it didn't, I know that I've been on podcasts before that have got me a million times better results. Um, because like you said, you've got the right people paying attention to you who are in your audience who will be interested in like joining what it is that you have to offer. Whereas on the BBC News, it's small percentage of those people potentially who are interested in what it is that I'm doing um, at the Female Entrepreneur Association. <laughs> um, so that's really, really fascinating. Um, so, okay, so then what is that next step from, mm -hmm. from there? Yeah, so step three is determining your expert topics. 
And a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we can be multi-passionate. And it's like, oh, I could talk about this and I could talk about that. Um, like for me, for example, um, you know, I've experienced with growing and building a team. Um, but, you know, and I've done webinars and all sorts of things. And I, I can teach on those things. But if you get, if you talk about too many things, you're not ever really known for one thing. So I recommend that entrepreneurs have two expert topics two core expert topics, one niche topic and one mainstream. So for me, my niche topic is publicity because, and it's niche because not every single person in the world needs publicity or at least not the majority, but you know, certain kinds of entrepreneurs absolutely do want publicity. My secondary topic is networking and relationship building. That is a mainstream topic because everyone from the stay at home mom can benefit from building their network, you know, as well as that college student who, you know, is looking for their first internship, but not those, they, they don't need publicity per se. Um, you know, even the topic of like introversion, you might think it's a niche topic, but it's actually mainstream because about half the population are introverts. So it applies to a lot of people. People. And so I've worked with business owners, for example, who maybe they specialize in survey funnels, and that's a niche topic. And so even if they're pursuing what they feel like is niche media, like Forbes or Entrepreneur, that's not niche media. You know, they're really targeting, you know, the average entrepreneur. They want to make sure the advice is applicable to the majority of their audience. Um, another example I can share is I had a client who wrote a book on overcoming breast cancer, and um, but her bigger message was about becoming the CEO of your own health. And when she was pitching and led with her niche topic, breast cancer, breast cancer, what happened is these women's magazines, because I was friends with the editors there, they would say, you know, we love Christine, but the average person picking up Self Magazine doesn't have breast cancer. And so it's not relevant to the larger audience. Like we'll do something, you know, once a year for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, but it, it just doesn't connect. And so what we had to do is like look at the bigger topic of becoming the CEO of your own health and think about things like healthy living and lifestyle, you know, non-toxic living, um, healthy recipes. And we made it broader. And there were so many like different subtopics we could create. Then she was able to get into the media and she could still share her story about being a breast cancer survivor, but that wasn't like, you know, the be all end all. And so a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, we love the work that we do with our clients. And sometimes we can get really granular and maybe we're passionate about something that's very niche. But the thing with the media, if you're pursuing mainstream media, is you need to be mindful that if you present something too niche, you're not going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I think, uh, yeah, because I was thinking then, I guess my niche, I feel weird saying niche. I, I say niche. <laughs> I mean, yeah, both but, uh, Mine would, I guess, be then um, what female entrepreneurship may be in business and then maybe a bigger would be like inspiring and empowering and like living a life of your dreams would be then the bigger mainstream topic. Yeah, I think so. The thing is, a lot of people are interested in side hustles True, and getting, yeah. you know, so if it was something like side hustles or how to make your first thousand dollars online that is pretty broad so that could be a True. mainstream topic but if you were saying talking about how to scale from six to seven figures or even how to make six figures now you're getting more niche yeah makes sense um so i guess just even sitting down and just brainstorming that and just coming up with because i bet people i can we just don't think about this stuff until like yeah. for example you just said that like i hadn't thought about what would be something that would be a niche topic and something that would be mainstream. And I guess it takes some time just to hear it and to, hit, to, to trigger us to start thinking about, like, actually, this is what I could talk about. Um, and I think that's probably what puts so many people off from actually putting themselves forward for media because they just don't actually know what they've got to say because no one's pulled it out of them yet. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes when people's ideas get rejected, it's not because these are bad story ideas, it's just a, not a match for the media outlet because you've gotten too niche. Um, but it could be perfect for a podcast. Like for example, with Fast Company, that doesn't just target entrepreneurs. It, Definitely, you know, it's also everyday workers that these companies are looking to grow. And so, you know, a lot of entrepreneurship topics, like we cannot pitch to fast company, but we could pitch topics around creativity, innovation, teamwork, productivity, 
success habits, morning routine. So there really is a lot that we can do um, once we get really clear on what is niche versus what is mainstream. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so what's the next step then in the seven part framework? Yeah. So once you know what your story uh, or sorry, your expert topic, that's number three, the number four is to figure out what your story ideas are because you can't just pitch the media and say, Hey, I'm an expert in work life balance. Like that's not enough. It's like, okay, well, what's the actual story? What are people going to learn? What are they going to take away? And so when you're thinking about story ideas, there's three main things to keep in mind. Um, and your story should have at least one, if not two of these. So one is the story needs to be valuable and helpful to others. It can't just be like, oh, look at how successful I am, or I just like launched an online program. It's kind of like, so what? How is this relevant to the audience that is consuming the information? So a lot of how-to articles are really popular, um, you know, five ways to do X, Y, Z, number one tips, because it's helping people get to a result. Now, number two is that the media loves story ideas that are timely because there are a million things that we could talk about, but why do people need to hear this right now? So, you know, whether it's a story about, um, I don't know, like a social or cultural movement that is big in the world right now, um, you know, or, or maybe it's like a story around Valentine's Day and like Valentine's Day is approaching. Um, you know, if you can tie it to what people are already talking about or experiencing in the world, it's more likely to get picked up. Yep, makes sense. I know I always try and bear that in mind in events that happen throughout the year, like International Women's Day and Entrepreneurship Week and all those kinds of things, where it's more relevant to the kind of stuff I would talk about and where magazines or places might be interested to talk about that those topics. Um, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other, the, the third thing is that you know the media is looking for stories that are emotionally charged, things that are going to move people on an emotional level that's going to want them to take an action that's going where maybe, or they're scrolling through their newsfeed and like, oh my gosh, I have to listen to that podcast interview or read that story. Um, so, you know, opening up about the ups and downs of um, your life as an entrepreneur or, you know, um, a horror story that you've experienced in your line of work or the best thing that happened that changed your life. Um, but those are things that the media cares about. About. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so what is, so that was, the, was that the third thing? That's four. So four. we talked about getting clear on your why and then figuring out the right media opportunities for you. And then the third is expert topics. Number four is story ideas. And then number five is pitching. So I'm not going to go through the full pitch because that could take a long time and be a podcast episode in and of itself, but um, I'll just kind of share a couple of key things. So when you're sending an email pitch to someone, the first thing that people notice, okay, I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the first thing that they notice when you pitch them? Oh God, the overall idea. So the first thing they notice, so a lot of people will say the first thing is a subject line of the email, right? Okay, yeah. But the first thing they notice is the, the from, like who is sending me this? <laughs> okay, and my mind thing? wasn't even in that place. I was like, uh, I wasn't even thinking email, but go, okay, go on. Right, right, yeah. Um, because, I mean, I'm sure it's the same with you, Carrie. When you've got, you know, hundreds of emails, you're probably going to open up the email first based on if you know the person or have some kind of relationship. Yeah. And I... I think that's important to mention because for a lot of us, you know, some of the best opportunities are, you know, incredible guest expert opportunities, whether it's in someone's membership group or mastermind um, or, you know, um, an influencer's podcast. And even with guest posting opportunities, there, there are ways to build relationships. They could be people who are in our industry or maybe, you know, you start following that person online and you comment on their blog or you're resharing their content or, you know, you're reaching out to the media with some helpful advice or trends before you're even, you know, doing a full on pitch with yourself. But if you are a friendly and familiar name, just keep in mind that your email is more likely to be opened up. So it's something to consider. And I know that it might be hard to do that every single time, but whenever you can do it, it will give you an advantage. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and I know podcasters will say to me that, you know, getting five-star reviews is so important. So if you do have a favorite podcast that you feel like you would be a fit to be on, you may want to consider taking the time to write a five-star 
iTunes review and sending that over to some that person so that they know that. And I've asked podcasters, like, is that like, you know, too much? And they're like, no, we love it when people let us know. You know, but they're listening to the podcast, they're reviewing it, they're sharing the content. It definitely um, works in their favor when we consider them for future opportunities. So just, you know, the from the relationship is important. Now, the other thing I'll just highlight um, in the pitch is when you share your story idea, um, I recommend sharing it in a headline format, you know, versus saying like, oh, I could talk about, you know, X, Y, Z, like one sentence or, you know, um, put it in the headline so that they could see, they could see like, okay, if I were to see this online, would I click on it? It just shows that you know how like the media thinks. But the other part is to include a little description because you could say, um, you know, Carrie, I want to be on your podcast and talk about five ways to grow your online business. And you're probably thinking, well, you know, that's a very broad story idea. And a lot of people talk about how to grow your online business. Um, you'd probably be curious, do you have anything special or different to add that we haven't already talked about a million times before? You know, but if someone were to maybe like hone in on that story idea, like five surprising ways to grow your online business using TikTok, you know, or Instagram, then it will be more specific and more interesting. And the person receiving the pitch will also want to know like, okay, give me some specific examples. You know, it's like five ways to be more creative in your business. Well, what are, what are some examples so I can actually get a better sense of my audience would benefit from that. So those are just some things to keep in mind when you pitch. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember when I reached out to the guy at the Telegraph, I think I re my subject line was re colon and then I put his the the subject the sorry the ta the headline of his article. Um, I think oh was, yes, I would respond <laughs> if I thought someone was replying to a conversation I was already having. <laughs> Oh, I was so like, good. I'm gonna be sneaky. I don't know if it worked. I mean, I don't know if he, that made any difference, but like, that's how I did it. Because I was like, I only open. I would have a conversation with somebody or open an email if I thought it was part of a trail that we'd been, you know. Oh my gosh, that is so clever! I'm like, hmm, I may need to do that myself because everyone wants to know, like you know, everyone's favorite topic is themselves. And it's like regarding, you know, your article on X, like, it's like, oh my gosh, did she like it? Is she upset? Like, what does she think? Like, did I do yeah. something wrong? Like, you know, it's just like that open loop where I need to know about this. That's why, yeah, that's my little trick. Um, <laughs> I totally agree. And I also think with like social media nowadays, like getting in touch with people like is, can be, easier. Like, I don't know how, I mean, there's obviously people who have Instagram accounts where they don't run them, but like, Mm -hmm. I know when people tag me in stories and like share things about my book, like I typically, I do see like sometimes I go through phases of being absolutely horrendous on Instagram and not seeing them, but often I will see them and yes. I'll reply. And, you know, if someone's taken the time to do that and to tag me and to share my book, I'm going to reply. And sometimes it then starts a conversation and you, you get to know people who reach out and are proactive at like connecting, getting to know you. I think like going back to your point of, doing the five-star review, like I remember in the people who say really nice things about what I've done, tell me and share with me how what I've created has impacted them. Like, I don't know, it, I listen, I pay attention because it means something to me. And I think that we've, everyone, we've all got the opportunity to do that and to reach out to the people that we do follow. I and mean, we do want to be, you know, we want to connect with them more deeply and get on their radar We've, thanks to social media, can do it a bit more easily now, which is... Absolutely. I mean, I love that you mentioned the Instagram stories because I'm thinking about, like, let's say when your next book comes out, um, maybe someone is doing a couple of Instagram stories where they're, like, holding up your book or they're, like, you know, um, they have a, a like, a image of your book and, like, something that they've underlined and they've loved or they're, like... Oh, just left a five star review. The other thing is like multiple touch points because I think sometimes we can reach out to someone once and it's more effective if there's like maybe two, three, four touch points just to really be remembered. But, you know, Carrie, if you just notice that someone over a stretch of time was just continually supportive of your work and cheering you on and they create this great Instagram story that then you reshare to your audience. You know, they don't have to be your BFF, but when you receive an email from them, you're going to have a good feeling inside and be like, oh, I'm curious to see what they have to say. I like this yeah, person. Exactly. I feel and like I've become friends with so many of the people that actually, <laughs> you know, reach out and share and do stuff because then you just start a conversation and you get to know somebody and then 
next thing you know they're at your house having tea <laughs> but um which That's has actually fun. happened <laughs> yeah but um but yeah I think it's um, you know I don't know it's, it's sometimes it's easier with some people and harder with others but like even my experience reaching out to people and um well you know reaching out to big names a lot of times they do respond and they mm-hmm. will say yes and I don't know, it's, it's interesting. But I guess it's that getting over that fear of putting yourself out there and having the courage to actually write the email and getting in the right mindset so that you 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 can you go for it rather than thinking, oh no, what's the point? There's no point. Which is where I think a lot of people get stuck with with any with putting themselves out there. Right. Um but yeah, I guess that's an entirely different topic in itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was number five. So what is the sixth step then? Yeah. So the sixth step is showing up with excellence. You know, a lot of people will say to me things like, Selena, I've done a couple podcast interviews, but nothing happened to my business. And oftentimes they're not really showing up in the right way. Um, actually, even beyond that, sometimes they're not even pursuing the right kinds of opportunities based on like the earlier steps. But that aside, you know, when you're on a podcast, there's a couple of things. This is just one example. It's going to be different for every medium, but for a podcast as an example, like you want to prepare. And I think a lot of people like they're kind of, they're sitting back and they're just waiting for someone to fire off questions. Um, and, and they almost like act surprised. And it's just like, you know, being um, reactive. Whereas like thinking about, okay, how can I plan this experience out? Pretty much every podcast host is going to ask you, you know, tell me about, you know, how you got to where you are today. So practice the answer to that. And if you're not grabbing people's attention early on in the interview and making that emotional connection, then they're probably not going to stick around to the 30 minute mark or one hour mark. So it is important to practice your answers to the most commonly asked questions with that being one of the main ones. Um, The other thing that I like to think about is what are my audience's objections? So for me, when it comes to publicity, people's objections are, well, I don't really know if I need publicity because I'm not an internet superstar or six figure entrepreneur, or maybe I don't have the personality. Like I'm more introverted. I'm not kind of like the person in the spotlight. And so you'll notice even during our conversation, these were points that I addressed um, so that people's minds would be open to what I have to say. Um, So you want to weave that in throughout your interview. And then also, if you have a program that is like your signature program, you should be sharing that in like an elegant way, in a natural, organic way. So let's say if you're someone who only exclusively works with clients one-on-one, you should, in your interviews, talk about, you know, when I work with clients one-on-one, or, you know, I love working with clients one-on-one, or here is an example from a one-on-one client. In my case, like I'm all about, you know, my program Impacting Millions, which opens, you know, one time a year. And so even, you know, with the titles for my interviews, um, because the host will often ask, like, do you have a suggested title? I'll include the words like impacting or impact millions in the title. Um, You know, oftentimes the host will mention the name of my program as they're, you know, um, introducing me or I'll bring it up. And And so, you know, by the time someone gets to the end of the interview, they're familiar. Okay, Selena's got a program called Impacting Millions. Um, You know, I don't have to be a huge extrovert to get publicity, nor do I need to be an internet superstar or a six-figure entrepreneur. So I've kind of like set it up so that the right people will be like, okay, I feel like there's something here for me. And they may take the next step, whether it's checking out my work, um, you know, getting on a list or that kind of thing. Whereas someone who just goes to an interview and just waits for questions to be fired off, doesn't do that preparation, they could do 10 interviews and 20 interviews or 30 interviews and not get any results and say, oh, media doesn't work. But they didn't show up with excellence to really make the most of the opportunity. Yeah, I so agree with that. It makes so much sense. And I I feel like the more prepared you are, the more success you can have. But preparing, like you said, in the right way so that you're showing up with the right information that's going to lead people to wanting to find out more. Um, it makes sense, but I can see why a lot of people would miss doing that. Um, but I guess also, <laughs> well, that's why we're doing this interview now so that people can learn this stuff and so they can yeah. be better at it. But also, I guess, practice and practice and practice with like getting better at sharing your story and making it uh, compelling in alignment with what it is you offer so that people want to go and find out more about the offer as well it's probably it's, it's, it's definitely a good thing just getting it done I guess it's why also do you tell people well 
not necessarily to start small, but like sometimes I'm really grateful that like some of my earlier opportunities for like podcasts were smaller podcasts so that I could practice being crap on small yes! podcasts. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up that point. That's really huge, Carrie, because the thing is our very first podcast interview is not going to be um, nearly as good as our 20th podcast interview. And I don't know if you find this, Carrie, but I find that like when I share the same stories again and again, the stories get better. And I also get feedback from the host in a way, even just from their expression in terms of what is resonating. Yeah. But you don't know that until like you do something repeatedly. Yeah, I agree. And like now having um, been interviewed on a number of occasions, I feel like I've nailed down my story. I know what I'm saying. And it just like, I can just speak and I can just, I know how to show up and do a good job and deliver a really valuable response to questions that people ask because like in the past sometimes I've interviewed people and something as simple as asking them their story it just I'm like what are you even talking about right now I can't even follow along because I think that you think that sharing your story is going to be straightforward well someone's going to ask me I remember actually doing this myself I remember Mm -hmm. at the beginning whenever I was interviewed I was like well how hard can it be to answer a few questions but if you have not strategically thought about it, you come out with the biggest pile of crap and you're like, what even just came out of my mouth? And I yeah. remember having that experience so many times and like being so embarrassed by what I'd said because I wasn't prepared. And so now I definitely make the time, well, I've done it enough times and practiced enough times that I can just share my story like so well but it it does take practice you really have to think about it especially if you want it to make you make compel somebody to take an action or to go and find out more about you um practice like crazy <laughs> it's hard for all of us and sometimes once we have our story nailed down like we forget that it was very hard in the beginning but it's like where do you even begin to tell your story? There's so many details and it is really valuable to get feedback from others in terms of like, what is the most interesting part of your story and what you could probably cut out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Practice makes perfect. And everyone starts off being a bit crap. <laughs> good, to, <laughs> good for all of us to know. So what is the final step then in the framework that you have? Yeah. So step number seven, the final step is really leveraging your media. So once you have an interview or an article or special opportunity that is released or airs, you know, people sometimes think like, okay, let me just sit back and wait for everything to happen to me. But really you're just getting started. I mean, I really see it as 50% of the work has been done, but there's so much more to do. Um, For example, the people in your existing audience that follow you on social media that are on your newsletter, if you have a list, These are people that are like, you know, that care about you, that are interested in you. And sometimes they're on the verge of working with you, wanting to work with you. But, you know, if you start sharing your interviews, your articles, the opportunities you're getting, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, like this person I'm following is blowing up. Like I better reach out to them or this is a sign. I'm seeing them everywhere. You know, I meant to work with them. Um, So that is important. Like let's say somebody has an email list of a thousand people. Um, and they have got an amazing, you know, article that comes out on Forbes and they just like wait for Forbes to do everything for them. Well, like imagine if they were to email their list of a thousand people, the article, let's say they get a 25% open rate, which means 250 people have now checked out the article. Well, they could also do a simple resend to an opens and maybe they go from 25% to 35% and now 350 people have seen the article and then you know they post it on their Facebook page and people are excited and they interact with that and then that's 150 people right there and then they do Instagram stories and Instagram and so forth and before you've got you know know it like 500 600 more people have been exposed to the article because you actually took the time to do that work and I mean I've had you know people that have landed incredible opportunities on Forbes and Oprah. And it's so important to actually share that and make sure that people in your world know it happened. So what some people have done is even in their email signatures, it's like check out my recent article on Forbes or check out, you know, me and Oprah magazine and that they'll maybe have like a little graphic um, that they can use to promote it even in their email signature or on social media. Um, the other thing is, you know, updating your bio when you are being um, introduced on a podcast 
podcast or at a speaking event or whatever it is, people saying, you know, we're welcoming this expert, you know, she has been featured in X, Y, and Z place. Like that's really powerful. Um, you know, when people are looking to opt in to your email list or give, you know, or register for a webinar and give you their time or maybe sign up for your program and give you money, like during those places where people are about to take an action, that is a great place to include your media logos to remind people that you've been getting your work out there in a big way and are seen as credible by those media outlets. So, I mean, I have like a list of like so many things that people can do, like, you know, well over a dozen things. And I find that a lot of people forget to do any of these things sometimes and therefore they're not getting the impact of media and that's why like I always laugh when people are like oh I tried getting publicity but it didn't do anything for my business and just to kind of recap some of the things that we talked about they have not been clear on their why and what are the right opportunities for them um, they haven't gotten really clear on what are the topics I want to be an expert on? Like I'm an expert on publicity and my offer is a publicity offer. Yeah, I could talk about team building all day long, but that's not going to get me any business because that's not actually what I sell, right? So people are making these kind of mistakes early on. They're not presenting the right story ideas to the media, right? Or they're going to niche when they should maybe consider being a little bit more mainstream. They're not pitching in the right way. They're not building the relationships. Um, they're not showing up with excellence in their interviews and then they're not leveraging it and so they're not doing all these things and then they wonder why it doesn't work. But when you actually do these things, which are not that difficult once you know the steps, then you will get like 10 times the results. And the thing is, you know, if you're going to show up and do an interview or put yourself out there and do it again and again, you know, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times and not actually apply these things and you're really missing out in a really big way. Yeah, I agree. I feel like there's so much opportunity for people to really get out there. Even from the get-go of starting a business, like you said, it doesn't have to be when you have a six-figure business or you feel like you've created, like, you don't have to wait till you're really successful, I guess, to be able to show up with your knowledge and expertise and for it to be valuable to media outlets or podcast podcasters and to be featured on your podcast. And I think that is a huge mistake that people, I know I see people making that, feeling like they're not good enough to be, to even bother with reaching out to get featured on anything, which right. is such a shame. But I think everything you shared, it's like, no, you are good enough. You just need to get these pieces in place so that you can make the most of like going for it and getting the opportunities that will create that exposure. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you. Must, I mean, you must, what, have you got like a favorite story of someone that you've worked with that's, you know, gone from, you know, who's been maybe has a smaller business and then has got like an amazing result and exposure? Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite stories is, you know, from just like an everyday entrepreneur who started her business and she didn't even have, she had a, a website, like it was a single page, but there was like no opt-in on her website or anything. She was still figuring out like what to give as her freebie and how to establish herself. But she did a podcast interview. And from that interview, someone was so inspired by her story and the advice she shared that the person tracked her down on Facebook and sent her a private message and said, Hey, how can I hire you? And then this coach got her first $3,000 client. So, you know, you don't need to have every single thing in place, um, but you do need to put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, so true. Maybe you can come back at some point and we can talk about how to actually get out of your own way, get over your fear oh. and do yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I I could talk a lot about, um, yeah, overcoming fears of visibility because that's the whole other thing is, you know, I can share the steps for someone to take, but if they don't believe in themselves or they're self-sabotaging and they won't press the send button or they won't take the actions, then we're not even, you know, we, we can't even get to like the pitch part. So that is a huge piece. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we can co you can come back and we can chat more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and sharing those tips on how to get publicity. I think that there's so many simple, practical, actionable steps that people can actually take to start to get themselves out there. And hopefully it'll help everyone just to see like what is possible and that we can all do this and, you don't have to have everything figured out. You don't have to have loads of success to make the most of the opportunities that are out there. So thank you so much for coming and sharing. Um, yeah. Where is the best place for people to find out more about you and connect with you and learn more from you? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the best place for people to go is actually to impactingmillions.com slash calendar because I have a free gift for people there. So as we were talking about story ideas, one of the key things is to make sure that your story is timely and relevant to the media right now. And so every year we have, you know, a fresh calendar full of 12 months worth of story ideas, um, special hooks, special dates to really make sure your ideas are relevant to the media. And we give like tons of examples. Like if you're a health coach, you might want to think about this in this month. If you're a business expert, this is a unique angle you could use and so forth. So there are literally like hundreds of special dates and story ideas and prompts. And like you said, like understanding that is really a shortcut. Um, so you can go to impactingmillions.com slash calendar to get the 12 month media calendar. Amazing. I will definitely leave that in the show notes too for everyone. So if you're listening to this over on iTunes, head to femaleentrepreneurassociation.com forward slash Selena and all of the show notes will be over there. Selena, thank you so much for though for sharing that with us. It's so helpful and it's been really interesting to hear your seven part framework and just all those little details I feel like um, are so helpful. I mean, even I've thought like right now I need to figure out what my niche topic is and what my mainstream topics are so thanks for that <laughs> you're so welcome um i hope you have loved listening to this episode um if you have definitely head over to itunes leave us a review i would absolutely love to read it i love reading all of them and i will see you next week for another episode of the she means business show I hope you loved this week's episode of the She Means Business Show. If you want more help and support to build a wildly successful business, then join hundreds of thousands of women and become an FEA insider. You'll get access to some of our amazing freebies, to our bonuses, to our giveaways, to so much good stuff. Head over to femaleentrepreneurassociation.com forward slash insider to get all of the goodness. And I will see you next week for another episode of the She Means Business Show.